Diets and workouts, you've done the work, so why can't you get to your goal weight? That's because up to 70% of your weight is predetermined by your genetics. So while you've been told that it's all about your willpower, you're actually fighting your biology. Don't do it alone. Found's doctor designed program uses medication as part of a treatment plan that targets your body's unique biological needs so that your body works with you and not against you. Take the quiz at joinfound.com to see if Found's weight loss program is right for you. JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab created or earth created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict free stones. Then you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real time diamond consultations available where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com code podcast. That's jamesallen.com code podcast. I'm Tim Fitzgerald at gopowercat.com. And I'm Michael Swain of fog.net. This is a replay of WIBW show, The Drive. Here's this week's episode on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Good evening, Wildcat and Jayhawk fans, and welcome to The Drive, sponsored by Briggs Auto Group. I am Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. The man across the studio is Michael Swain of Fog.net, the man who covers the Big 12 champion Kansas Jayhawks. I do. Played a significant role in the season. Oh, I played. That's why I'm wearing shorts tonight. Just got off the plane, you know, coming from Austin. I'm ready. You just give off our secrets. Like, you know, you're just wearing shorts. I'm, I'm wearing pants. Ah. Hate to disappoint the viewers. Well, you can interact with us on social media at facebook.com slash the drive show, on Twitter at the drive 13, and of course, answer our weekly poll question and make your game predictions on our Twitter page. And remember, if you ever miss an episode of the drive, you can listen to an audio only version that will appear each Monday morning in the form of a podcast at gopowercat and fog.net. We start things off with our two-minute drill. The first segment of the two-minute drill is sponsored by Vanderbilt's Your Work Boot Center. Well, Kansas claimed the Big 12 title outright earlier this week, but on Saturday, KU had its seven-game winning streak snapped at Texas in a blowout loss. Michael, are you reading into this result anything at all? Not really. The best thing I can compare this to is 2018 when Kansas wrapped up the Big 12 title with a huge win over Texas Tech. They still had to go to Oklahoma State to round out the regular season. They went in and lost, and that was only the first time that KU had ever been swept by a Big 12 team. And I kind of got a similar vibe going into this one. Bill Self can say that he's not going to rest guys or that they still have a lot to play for, but you know, in reality, they don't. And this has been coming where I think over the last five or so games, KU was really pressing. I think you've seen that offensively and just as a team collectively, they want to get over the line. And once you get over the line, it's hard not to maybe embrace the inherent nature to coast. And I think that's what you saw. This is a team that went into a hostile environment at Texas and didn't bring the energy or the intensity that you've seen in recent games. I can compare it a lot to that TCU game where KU did not play well at TCU on Big Monday but they found a way to win. They were gritty, they, they grinded through that game. There wasn't any sort of that nature in this Texas game. Now give credit to Texas. They're a team that going into this game was projected to win by you know advanced sites like Torvik or Ken Palm. So this wasn't an upset for Texas winning, but this is still a performance to look at for Kansas and it's out of character from what you saw from the Jayhawks down the stretch of this Big 12 season. And so when you look ahead now, it's a question of, okay, can they get back on the horse? The one concerning thing I think from this game is the amount of minutes that guys like Jalen Wilson, Juwan Harris, Kevin McCuller had to play. They all played over 30 minutes. This is a game that was kind of, you knew KU wasn't going to win from about probably the 16 minute mark in the second half. And yet, KU got nothing from the bench. Bill Self could not rely on those bench players. They were unplayable. And so as a result, those starters had to log more and more minutes against an athletic, a physical Texas team. So overall, I look at this game, you know, it's one of those where you can't really read into the overall results. I think the performance, now you're going to look for Kansas to bounce back in Kansas City, but it's kind of predictable. Kansas won the Big 12 early in the week. A letdown spot was kind of going to come. Well, there's no doubt this final week of the season was an opportunity for teams on the bubble or wanting to get in the tournament to make a final statement, and they did that. This conference is so good that you can't rest anywhere. I mean, TCU went to Oklahoma and just got blown out and I think we both think TCU is going to do really well in the postseason 
This was all. This was kind of their weekend to have the final hurrah for all those teams that are scraping to get in the tournament. Exactly, and for Texas too, right? They do have a lot to play for in terms of seeding. Yep. I still think they should be a number two seed overall. That's how good they are. They just ran into, like you said, fits a, a really, really good TCU team. Absolutely, they did. All right, let's transition to Kansas State, which started fast at West Virginia, but the shorthanded Wildcats ran out of gas, losing 89 to 81 to the Mountaineers. Fitz, what did this loss really mean for K-State? Well, all K-State had to do is win, and they would have been the second seed in Kansas City. Instead, they're the third seed. I mean, they could have lost, and Baylor had already lost, and then Kansas could have done K-State a favor by beating Texas, but did KU do that? No. I think they lost on purpose to make K-State the third seed. Look, uh, K-State didn't play well. There's no way around it. Desi Sills was not at the game, and, you know, he was a candidate for sixth man of the year, even though he had started the last four games. All four victories for Kansas State. And Desi has become very important to this lineup, but he was at a family funeral uh, for a cousin who passed away at a very young age. So it was unfortunate for Desi. He's been dealing with that for a while, um, and now he finally had to miss the game. Look, k State turned the ball over like 20 times. They started off really good, and then they just kind of came apart. As I've said all season long, when K-State takes care of the ball, when the Wildcats do not turn it over, this is a really good basketball team. And when they have a third guy step up, that also makes them a really good basketball team. And the most likely candidate to, to do that is Desi Sills, and he wasn't there. Instead, you had... Keontae Johnson absolutely go off in the first half, and then Marquise Noel go off in the second half, and nobody really helped them out. We had to put Cam Carter as the third star of the game, even though Cam had five turnovers, but he did have five assists. K-State's got to have a team effort to win, and they just don't have the roster depth to survive missing a key player like a Desi Sills. And it really showed up. But at the end of the day, being the two seed and playing at six or the three seed and playing at 8.30 doesn't seem that big a difference. The problem is now you get TCU instead of what probably would have been the winner of the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State game. And so be it. They'll just move on through this now because none of this matters. It doesn't matter that Kansas lost the last game of the season or Kansas State lost the last game of the season. They go to Kansas City where they can play three games and three wins means you're the champion of that. And then you go to the NCAA tournament, six games makes you the championship of that with wins. Nine more games is all either one of these teams can play, and what they did on Saturday doesn't mean squat. It really doesn't. It doesn't really impact what they posted earlier this season. Yeah. What it does impact is West Virginia. I think you look at the way they've played over the last week, right? You beat Iowa State. You beat K-State. They're firmly in the tournament yeah. now. And I think that is probably what you also have taken into fact here, right? You know, K-State, in terms of overall what to play for, not a ton. West Virginia still felt like they were fighting for their lives, and I don't think that can be overlooked. West Virginia feels like a nine seed. They're going to put them in that eight, nine game and then maybe match them up with the one seed. We'll see what happens. Well, the Big 12 tournament is this week in Kansas City. And Michael, what's the biggest storyline heading into Kansas City? Well, I think it's kind of what we just hit on, Fitz. You look at some of the teams like West Virginia, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, maybe even Oklahoma. Can any of these teams that are kind of on the fringe of the bubble go on a big run where maybe you see, you know, an Oklahoma State team really come together in the after the loss of Avery Anderson? They've kind of struggled as of late, but maybe they catch fire in Kansas City. Maybe Texas Tech rallies around the Mark Adams situation and all of a sudden rips off, you know, three, four straight wins. I, I think this is a, a tournament that in terms of the top teams, you know, Kansas is playing for you know, a number one overall seed. Texas is really trying to firm up being a two seed. But overall, I think it's more about those kind of back half, back end teams, what they can do for themselves. Well, for me, it's this team on the screen right now. Uh, if you listen to the podcast, it's TCU. This is the sneaky, dangerous team of the Big 12 tournament. They come in as the sixth seed, but as we know, they've had key injuries all season long, and now they're healthy, even though they stunk it up on Saturday like K-State and KU did. But I think the Frogs might be the team to beat once you get into this bracket because they have a lot to prove. They have some ground to make up for because of their lull in the middle of the season with those injuries. But the other storyline I like is, will anyone come out of that Wednesday bracket? Because Wednesday is going to be a blast with West Virginia and Texas Tech and then the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State game. Real quick before we're done, the Big 12 uh, awards, postseason awards were announced right before we went to tape. And... Uh, 
Jalen Wilson, deservedly so, unanimous uh, player of the year. Jerome Tang, coach of the year. Anything jump out at you about these awards? Well, Fitz, I might steal your thunder here, but KJ Adams getting the Big 12 most improved player. Uh, he obviously deserves it. He has improved so much, but I think you're looking at him being a player who in terms of usage rate, in terms of minutes, went from not doing much last year as a true freshman, as expected, to being a guy that started and played about 30 minutes a game. The production was always going to match it. Maybe it's just a question of, okay, is it nine points a game versus 11? But I think that Marquise Noel probably was the deserving winner there. Yeah, I would agree. I think Marquise Noel, the, what he's done this year is incredible. And him and Keontae Johnson were on the first team. Keontae Johnson was the newcomer of the year. What a great year in the conference. But this, this, these awards showed how great K-State and KU have been this year. It's incredible. Now, a quick look at your poll question results. The poll questions are brought to you by Midland Exteriors. Love the home you live in. Call today for a free estimate. All right, Fitz, last week's question was, who has been the most disappointing team in the Big 12 this season? Oklahoma got 27% of the vote. Texas Tech, the overwhelming favorite, got 54% of the vote. And West Virginia got 19% of the vote. And after this weekend, I agree that Texas Tech is the most disappointing team. Yeah, that disappointing continued right into after the games were played. We'll get to that later in the show. This week's question is this. Who wins the Big 12 tournament? We only had four slots. Kansas, Kansas State, TCU, and Texas were the four we picked. With all respect to Baylor and Iowa State, the four and five seeds. Those are your choices. Vote on our Twitter page at the Drive 13. All right, that will do it for this half of the two minute drill. But when we return, we'll be right back with more on KU and K State on the Drive. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is here to help you grow, whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits. Shopify helps you sell everywhere, from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash odyssey podcast all lowercase go to shopify.com slash odyssey podcast now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash odyssey podcast welcome back to the drive fueled by briggsauto.com Welcome back as we continue our weekly two-minute drill, this segment of the two-minute drill sponsored by Copeland Insurance Agency, part of your community for more than 60 years. KU heads into the Big 12 tournament with the number one seed basically locked up. Michael, what are you looking for from the Jayhawks this week in Kansas City? Well, I think an underlying part of KU's stretch run was their lack of offense, where I think through a good portion of Big 12 play, they were a, a well-balanced team. You look between kind of that Texas game and that Baylor game, they spread the scoring around, right? Jalen Wilson wasn't scoring 20 to 25 points. He was kind of in that 10 to 13, 10 to 14 point range, which is fine when guys like KJ Adams, Dewan Harris, Kevin McCuller, they're contributing. But I think it all revolves around Grady Dick and what kind of struggles he's gone through. It was just a few games ago that he scored 26 points against TCU. But over the last two games, he's just not gotten his shot off. And I don't know if this is a result of maybe getting a little tired towards the end of the season, maybe other teams in their defensive schemes trying to stop him. But he's someone that averaged 11 shots per game. Those are usually three pointers. And now over the last two games combined, he shot six total times. Now, I don't know if that's because teams have shut him down and he doesn't want to feel like he's forcing shots. It does seem like maybe there's a bit of hesitancy 
creeping into his game. I think against Texas, there were a few times when he could have taken a three. It would have been a little contested, but for a shooter like him that is going to be an NBA lottery pick most likely, you'd want him to take the shot and have the confidence to go out there and do it. And it feels like as of late, that's kind of slid. So can in Kansas City, someone like Grady Dick kind of find that confidence? Can someone like KJ Adams and Jalen Wilson get back some of that scoring punch where Wilson has been able to score a little bit more as of late, but in terms of his efficiency, it hasn't quite been there where maybe it was a few weeks ago. So I think holistically for this Kansas team, you know they have to play with intensity, right? Defensively on the glass. I think that will come in these big games. Okay, you showed that they will turn up in the big Big 12 games. Now they'll probably do it in the postseason, but offensively, can they just look better? You know, over the last, I believe, like five or six games, they've had the offense that's ranked over 100th in the country. Mm. And they are a team that for the season is in the top 30. So I think it shows how much of a slip there's been there collectively. So now in Kansas City, can they refine their offensive form? Well, it'll be interesting. K is always good in Kansas City, as is Iowa State, but I don't expect the Iowa State Cyclones, despite what they did on Saturday, which was incredible, I don't expect them to have the full weight the Cyclones normally do in Kansas City. All right, Fitz, K-State enters the Big 12 tournament as the third seed. So the Wildcats were picked to finish last in the Big 12. So how remarkable has this season been, and can the Wildcats win this tournament? Uh, remarkable might be an understatement because we expected improved play. We expected kind of rejuvenation to the program to come along with Jerome Tang. But no one expected this. No one expected 20 plus wins, third place finish, uh, possibly being a two or three seed uh, in the NCAA tournament in one of the regionals. It's been absolutely incredible. You know, as Kansas State goes to Kansas City, they have a great opportunity. They're good enough to win the tournament. But they certainly made their path more difficult by slipping from the third line or just the second line to the third line with that loss. Now they have to go through TCU, who honestly I think is going to win this thing. That means they would beat K-State on Thursday in the late game in Kansas City. But if K-State survives that game, in all likelihood, then they'd have to play Texas, a team they've had two great matchups with. And in fact, Texas was the only team to beat K-State in Bramlage Coliseum this year, but K-State won in Austin. So a third game seems like it would be fitting. And oh, by the way, if you get through that, it's probably Kansas. That would sum up the Big 12 in so many ways that that is the route you would have to take to win a Big 12 title. And while K-State's capable of it, and it would be a great feather in the cap of this program to go do that, it's really not that important. What they really need to have their eyes on is what happens after this tournament. And the one thing they can accomplish in Kansas City is getting off the three line of most bracketology projections and getting back up to the two line where they've been up there just briefly here late in the season and now they've slipped back down to the three line. How important is it? Well, not really that important, but you certainly find a more uh, reputation from being on that two line and maybe even a little bit easier path into the Elite Eight and Final Four. This K-State team is capable of playing at a Final Four level. And that, to bring it full circle, is absolutely incredible because I haven't been able to say that about a K-State team in a very long time. This team's capable of whatever it wants to do. We'll see what it does. Well, Fitz, I think something you talked about maybe early in the season with the comparison between Iowa State and K-State last year. Iowa State picked to finish last. They made it to the Sweet 16. K-State picked to finish last. I think they'll make it to the Sweet 16 this time around. Yep, I agree. And, you know, they might run into that two seed, and and that might end there. But uh, if they make the Sweet 16, what a season it's been. It's been a great season anyhow. And now we step out of bounds, and out of bounds is brought to you by Darius Corner Market. We love local, and we are local for you. All right, Fitz, I really want to get your opinion on this. Texas Tech coach Mark Adams has been suspended for comments he made to a player and a separate incident in which he reportedly spit on a player. Should he even be allowed to coach another game for Texas Tech? Uh, I, I don't think he will. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes in Lubbock that isn't in the public eye. And I'm not going to discuss it here because it's unsavory, but it involves him. And he has been under fire from his fan base for his personal behavior for a while. I don't think this would get him fired under under normal circumstances, but because of everything else, he's never going to coach in Lubbock again, and they're not going to have to pay off his contract. His his biblical reference to a uh, master and servant is a 
is an interesting way to uh, address a young man that's African American. Probably not intentional, but also it leaked out and that's what he said. And while that's bad, the spitting incident is just gross. He claims it was an accident, but the players are saying absolutely it was not and that he's threatened to do it. So I, I'm, I just don't see any way he survives this. And, you know, this is the guy that replaced Chris Beard. And Kirby Hocutt's a great guy, former K-State linebacker. Kirby, you might want to check into character a little more when you're hiring coaches because these last two basketball coaches have failed woefully in that area. Ugh. Yeah, Fitz, I agree. It's just ugly, and it's something you can't do, period, ever, any level of youth sports, college sports, pro sports. There's got to be a respect level there, and I think they probably cross the line there and just totally unacceptable. Being an old-school coach doesn't work in the modern day. It just doesn't. Now let's hear from our fans. Our fan question is sponsored by Metal Arc. Retirement awaits in Manhattan where you can live your way every day. All right, Fitz, our fan question this week is, I'm curious where you two think K-State and KU will be sent for the NCAA tournament. This is from Donald in Topeka. I don't think, I don't think that's the former president. I don't think he's in Topeka. What do you think? Where's KU going to end up? Um, I think we can all agree Des Moines. I, Des Moines, I lived there for a while. Let's not go back. Yeah, but that's where they're going to end up, Yes, that's where they're going to go, and most likely Las Vegas after that. We'll see about the number one overall seed if they get that. It'll be Kansas City, but I have a feeling it'll be Las Vegas. I'm interested to see what the committee does with Kansas State in in reference to how it lines up with KU. I think they might get sent to Denver Mm -hmm. um, to sell tickets out there because there's really no anchor to that that sub-regional or whatever, that pod. And if Houston's in Kansas City, I think Kansas State might end up in that bracket for Kansas City, which would be an interesting turn of events. It would. All right, well, remember to ask us your questions on our Facebook page and on Twitter at The Drive 13. When we return, we will look at our predictions here on The Drive. Welcome back to The Drive. Fueled by BriggsAuto.com. It's time to head down the home stretch of this week's show, and now let's take a look at our predictions. The predictions are brought to you by Kites and Kites Aggieville Draft House, meeting your friends at Kites and the Draft House since 1954. Remember to make your weekly predictions on our Twitter page at the Drive 13. Here's last week's results. Viewers and Michael went one and two. I had an outstanding week at two and one. I'm thinking about retiring, but I'll, I'm going to stick through it the rest of the season because here's this week's picks. We're going to pick some first-round games. We don't know who Kansas is playing, so we can't pick them. We start with Baylor and Iowa State in the 4-5 game. we got Baylor as a one-and-a-half-point favorite. Michael? I'll take Baylor. They've lost twice to Iowa State. I don't see it being a clean sweep. I'll take the Tornado Birds. That's all right, next them. up is K-State versus TCU. I got TCU going all the way in the Big 12 tournament, so I'll take the Horn Frogs. Right, we put this as a pick em. I think TCU wins. I'm sticking with the Cats, though. And our last game of the week is Oklahoma State. Oklahoma Bedlam in Kansas City. OSU by a point and a half, you say. Oklahoma State. Mm, I'll stick with Oklahoma. The only way Oklahoma is going to make the tournament is if they win this tournament. Don't count them out. You just never know. Again, make your picks on our Twitter page at the Drive 13. And now it's time for our On the Clock segment. On the Clock, sponsored by Carpet One. Buy local for a strong local community. We start off with Michael Swain. Well, Jalen Wilson will get his Kansas basketball jersey retired, and it marks an incredible stretch of Kansas players who will have their jerseys retired. You look all the way back to Frank Mason, Devontae Graham, Yudoka Azubuki, Ochai Abaji, and now Jalen Wilson. Five out of the last seven years have had a player who will have their jersey retired. Bill Self has coached a lot of great Kansas basketball players, and they're going to get the recognition they deserve at some point way down the road because Kansas takes its time with this but very cool that Jalen Wilson will now get that honor yeah very good well I guess the only thing I can say here that I haven't said is Jerome Tang thank you for Kansas State fans getting this level of basketball back so quickly with the change of coaching was absolutely incredible we never saw that coming for all of us covering Kansas State basketball but not just thank you for what you did thank you for hiring the guys you hired to be on your staff because they're all outstanding thank you for the recruiting you did in terms of the type of players not just on the court but off the court that you brought to Manhattan Jerome Tang's an interesting guy he lives with joy but he also demands excellence from all around him 
fun to be around. That's it for this week's edition of The Drive. We will see you next week right here and all week on social media. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. Sunday, the AFC Championship, presented by Intuit TurboTax, is on CBS. The defending champion Kansas City Chiefs go on the road once again to face top seed Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens with a trip to Super Bowl 58 on the line. That's a touchdown! We'll get you set for kickoff at 1 Eastern with a special two-hour edition of the NFL Today, the AFC Championship, Sunday on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus.